Hey everyone, so today I want to go over the difference between the transmission in the GT350 versus the GT500. Just like the engines in these cars, the transmissions go about doing the same job in two very different ways. And because of that, it makes the characteristics of the cars very different from each other. The GT350 is your traditional three-pedal, six-speed manual versus the GT500 with its DCT, the dual-clutch automatic transmission. So in this video, I want to go into depth talking about the transmissions, how they're constructed, how they're set up, how they operate, how much they cost, and really how they make the characteristics of the cars very different from each other. Now let's start off with the GT350, the Tremec TR3160 six-speed manual that utilizes a lockout collar for reverse. This is a very traditional H-pattern three-pedal manual transmission. And to be perfectly honest, there's really nothing unique or out of the ordinary here. If you've ever driven any other manual transmission, you can operate this one. This transmission was also utilized in the S550 Mach 1 as well as the S650 Dark Horse Mustangs. And this transmission is an all aluminum construction. And because of that, it comes in at a relatively lightweight 121 pounds. Now, some of the main features for this transmission are it utilizes high strength steel in the gears and the shafts. You have double and triple cone synchronizers. It has various low and anti-friction internals. And it also utilizes automatic transmission fluid to keep everything cooled and lubricated. Now, some of the supporting components for this transmission are it utilizes a twin disc clutch, which is nice not only because it has a lot of surface area on the clutch, but it's a relatively compact setup. And it does not build the inertia that a large single plate clutch traditionally does. The clutch is also hydraulically controlled. So it's really not hard to articulate it, especially if you're driving in traffic, it doesn't tend to fatigue your leg the way a manual clutch traditionally would. You also have a remote mounted shifter. For a really long time, a lot of the Mustangs, the shifter was bolted directly to the transmission. What's nice about this being remote mounted is you have a really nice ergonomics in this. You're not really reaching for the shifter the way you did with a lot of older Mustangs. And the shifter in this car is actually really good. You don't feel obligated to throw a shifter on this thing the way you would with a lot of older Mustangs. Now the aftermarket has definitely made improvements to the shifter, but you don't feel like you have to put a shifter on this thing. The throws are actually really good even from the factory. Now all of these aspects combined make this a very smooth transmission. Many of the people that have driven, raced, reviewed this car have said that this is one of the best modern manual transmissions ever built. For a long time, Tremec transmissions had the characteristics of being very notchy transmissions, especially transmissions like the T56 that was used in my Cobra R, my Viper. It was used in Vets, Vipers. A whole lot of cars used it, something like a T56, a fantastic, well-built, super durable transmission. But they were known for being pretty notchy, especially when they were cold. That one to two shift took a lot more effort when the transmissions were cold. This transmission is completely different. Even when it's cold, it shifts very smooth. You have a very positive feel of the engagement of each cog, of each gear. And when it's warmed up, it is buttery smooth, this transmission. And they are absolutely right. And I completely agree that this is one of the best performance modern manual transmissions ever built. Another unique characteristics is the very short gearing in this transmission. Typically with six speed manuals, especially in American cars, you would have fourth gear would be your one to one ratio and you would have five and six as your overdrive gears. With this transmission, five is one to one and sixth is your only overdrive gear. Now, because the gearing is so short, if you're driving in normal traffic conditions, just rowing through the gears, you go through the gears very quick because the RPMs really don't drop very much when you go to the next gear until you really get to sixth gear. But because you have such a large rev range in this car, it actually takes quite a while to get through each gear if you're running the engine to maximum engine speed. And a lot of people, especially when they're new to this car, they end up short shifting this car because you're not used to having such a high red line, especially in an American V8 car. So at low speed, they go through the gears really quick, but at high speed, you really do spend a lot of time in each gear as the tack sweeps through the entire rev range itself. Now, because this is such a basic transmission with really no electronics in it other than some various sensors, 
this transmission is not really expensive to replace should that situation arise. The retail on this transmission is only about $2,700, so it's really not excessively expensive, especially if it needs replacement outside of warranty. Now, the transmission in the GT500 is a completely different story. And the transmission in the S550 GT500, the Tremec TR. 9070 DCT. This is a seven speed dual clutch transmission. This actually shares a lot of components with the C8 Chevrolet Corvette. Now this transmission is primarily aluminum construction. It does utilize a plastic oil pan, but because of all the various complexities and added features to this transmission, it is considerably heavier. It comes in at 229 pounds, over a hundred pounds heavier than the transmission in the GT350. Now, some of the main features for this transmission are that it utilizes a rotary dial for the primary function of this transmission. It does have magnesium paddle shifters behind the steering wheel that you can utilize when you're driving it in manual mode, but for the most part, you're going to use the rotary dial for the main functions of this transmission. You also have two sets of wet clutches in this transmission. It also uses triple cone synchronizers, and it has two internal filters to help keep everything nice and clean. Now, this transmission uses a proprietary DCT fluid that was designed specifically for this transmission by Tremec. So you cannot use regular automatic transmission fluid in this car. The problem with this transmission is a lot of people simply dismiss it as an automatic transmission. Now, I think that's pretty short-sighted and narrow-minded to just call this an automatic transmission and it shows that a lot of people don't really understand what this transmission is about when most people think of an automatic transmission they think of something with a torque converter and planetary gears in it something like the 10r80 that's used in everything from the mustang gt to the ford f-150 that is a good general purpose automatic transmission that's not too expensive the problem is it's not the best for performance especially in a high performance car like this this is also very different from the E-Gear and F1 transmissions you started to see show up in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s in cars like Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Essentially what that transmission was, it was a manual, but they put a hydraulic actuator on it and they made it work as an automatic. The problem was that transmission was never designed to be automatic, so it was never really great at what it did. Towards the end, they got pretty good, but at low speed, driving in traffic, those transmissions were really clunky. And because the computer was articulating the clutch on those transmissions, they tended to eat clutches really quick. What is unique about the DCT is this is built like a manual, but it's designed to be automatic from the ground up. You have two sets of wet clutches and you have two input shafts, an inner and an outer. One shaft controls your odd number gears, one, three, five, and seven. One controls your even number gears, two, four, six, and reverse. You also have electro hydraulically controlled shift forks and the drive modes allow the computer to uh, adjust the pressure in the transmission so it can shift harder and faster and more aggressive like a sport or a track mode. Now because of all these features this allows the transmission to be extremely fast and consistent. The real magic in a DCT are the dual clutches and the dual input shafts that make this thing so fast. In a traditional manual transmission, a lot of things have to be done in a certain sequence to properly shift the car. Let's say you're doing that two to three shift. You have to let off the accelerator, push in the clutch, disengage second, go to neutral, engage third, put your foot back on the accelerator and disengage the clutch at the same time. That's a lot of steps that have to be done in a very specific sequence. You might be able to do it extremely fast, but it's still a lot of steps. The magic of the DCT is it can pre-select the next gear and is basically standing by ready to go. So you're in second gear, you want to go to third in the DCT, whether you're doing it manually or in automatic mode. Second gear is engaged, second gear clutch is engaged, third gear is pre-selected and the clutch is standing by ready to go. And in one movement, second gear clutch disengages while third gear engages. One step. That is why the DCTs are so fast. It doesn't have to happen sequentially. It's one step. And in the background, when you engage that third gear, the odd number clutch and third gear, the even number clutch that is disengaged is already pre-selecting fourth gear in the background. So it's getting ready to go for the next gear. 
This is why so many companies that make super high performance cars like Ferrari and Lamborghini have walked away from manuals. I am not saying manuals are bad. Manuals are very engaging, very classic, fantastic transmission to drive. But from a pure performance standpoint, the DCT is far superior to a manual. The problem with a heavily computer controlled car is that a manual transmission is basically a black hole in the systems in the car because they can't talk to a manual. With a manual transmission car, the car has to be reactive to what you do. It doesn't know when you're gonna push in the clutch, it doesn't know when you're gonna change gear. So it has to wait for you to do something and then correct or counteract that depending on what you do. Versus the DCT that is heavily computer controlled. Not only can it talk to the other systems in the car, but it can look at the telemetry data and predict what you're going to do. So this is being proactive instead of being reactive. So it can look at that and predict what you're going to do, like pre-selecting the next gear. It can see, are you accelerating, are you braking, and it can get ready to change to the next gear. So it's already standing by, ready to go with some of the job already done. That is why these DCTs are so fast. Now, some of the unique characteristics of this transmission in the GT500 specifically is that the gearing in this transmission is very tall. You don't have a one-to-one -one in this transmission. You Fourth gear is 1.1 to one, so it's pretty close, but five, six, and seven are overdrive gears in this transmission. But because you have so much power in this car, the gearing and the engine, they don't really care. It's got so much power to power through those overdrive gears that it, it doesn't really matter in this specific case. Um, you can utilize the paddle shifters in a full manual mode if you want to by pushing the M in the center of the rotary dial. Now, the, trans the uh, paddle shifters are wired directly to the transmission in this. And rather than having them go through other computer control modules and slowing that signal down to the transmission, Ford specifically wired the controls of these paddles directly to the transmission. So it, the signal goes that much faster to the transmission itself. Now, this transmission will do everything you tell it to unless you're going to cause a problem. The only time this transmission will ever disregard your inputs is if you're going to cause a mechanical over rev or a mechanical under rev. You're driving along in manual mode, going slow, and you keep hitting that up shift paddle, and you try to go to too tall of a gear, and you're gonna lug down the, the uh, engine, the transmission is gonna stop at a certain point and say no. More importantly, you will never cause a mechanical over rev in this transmission, even in manual mode. You're doing that two to three shift, you're at red line, you accidentally pull the downshift paddle. In a manual transmission, if you accidentally go from two to one, when you go to three, you're gonna potentially destroy the engine and cause significant damage. With this thing, because it's electronically controlled, the engine in a fraction of a, a transmission, a fraction of a second can see you're going to cause a mechanical over rev and it will disregard that input. That is the only time this transmission will disregard your inputs when you're gonna cause a problem. That's basically it. So you also actually also have some special controls with the paddles on this transmission that are nice. If you hold the right paddle, the upshift paddle, it will give you the tallest available gear without lugging it down. With the left paddle, you're cruising along in seventh gear and now all of a sudden you need power and you need it fast. You hold the left paddle, it will give you the lowest possible available gear without over revving the engine and you're off. You can also hold them both back together and you can rev the engine. Even when you're moving, you're driving along, you want to rev the engine, pull them both back together, rev it, let it go, it re-engages. So you do have some pretty cool and unique controls with the paddles themselves. Uh, there are some nuances with this transmission that are kind of annoying. You can't easily put this transmission into a neutral position like you can with a manual transmission where you just put it in neutral, drop the parking brake, and just push it around. You have two options. You have a stay in neutral mode that the car has to be running for. Basically, you put it into neutral and turn the car off, and you can move it around. The problem is it draws power from the battery to keep it in neutral, and you time out after 30 minutes. That's kind of for a really simple thing, like if you're towing the car for a few minutes, you can do a stay in neutral mode. Um, to move the car, if it's off inside the center console here, you have a cord that will manually pull the car out of park so that you can move it around. It will automatically engage the parking brake as a safety, so you have to put that off, but putting this car in neutral and moving it is a little bit of a pain. So it's kind of a nuance, but you kind of learn to live with it. You take that minor trade-off for all the excellent and amazing capabilities of this transmission. Now, the biggest problem here is all this technology 
and capability comes at a very steep price. This transmission retails for $11,700, over three times what the transmission in the GT350 costs. Now, because of that, this is why I always tell people on these expensive and complex cars, you should always consider an extended warranty on these cars. I buy it for all my cars, especially with how expensive and complicated they are. The engine in this car, the transmission are very expensive. So if you're gonna buy a car like this and you're gonna keep it for a long time, you should definitely consider getting an extended warranty because to replace really any of the components in this car, especially the big ones out of warranty is very, very expensive. So now let's get into my final thoughts about the transmissions in these cars. All right, so final thoughts. GT350 six-speed manual versus GT500 seven-speed DCT. As you've seen, these transmissions go about doing the same job in two completely opposite ways. The GT350 is completely reliant on driver inputs versus the GT500 is completely self-sufficient. Now, I think the GT350 is a more connected experience, especially on a street-driven car. If you enjoy the mechanics of operating a manual transmission, rowing the gears, operating the clutch, this is going to be a more connected and rewarding experience. It might not be as fast and consistent as a DCT is going to be, but you're more involved in the overall driving experience of the car versus the GT500. You obviously don't have to be as involved operating this transmission. You can if you want to operate the paddles manually, but this transmission is going to be better for all out performance, especially on the racetrack. This transmission is always going to be faster, so it's going to be more consistent and it's never going to miss a shift. And this allows you to better focus on operating the car as a whole than just the transmission itself. So I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.